everyone welcome to the lolo cynthia show my name is lolo cynthia so october is down syndrome awareness month and truthfully there is nothing that you know demonstrates love dedication and resilience than mothers who take care of their beautiful children with down syndrome and to my audience if you don't know what down syndrome is this is a genetic uh disorder that causes some form of like mental and developmental delays right, for children right. it also allow it also makes these children have some distinct uh facial features so on today's episode you're going to be hearing from different resilient mothers who take care of their children with down syndrome they're going to share with us some of their challenges their triumphs some of the milestones that gave them joy and how taking care of a child with down syndrome has impacted their lives how are you able to navigate that period where your child cannot talk but you know he needs something but you don't know what he needs it was a, it was very stressful moment because uh, you have a child whom you cannot communicate with you don't know what he wants you will you will just see he he collects something and hits you and you know when they don't talk they they want to say something and they don't know how to say they get frustrated the first guest on the show today is amina amina is joining us from kenya she shares that she had never even heard about down syndrome until she gave birth to her son so i cannot wait to have a conversation with her to hear some of the experiences that she went through taking care of her son who right now is nine years old i can only imagine the journey she has been on <music> My son Bilal, he's, he's just like any other kid. It's only that he, he's growing differently as the other kids, uh, compared to other kids. He's, he's just slowly, growing slowly, but he will finally reach there. In the morning when he, we normally wake up, we do at 5, 5.30, that's when we wake up. I prepare them. I start with preparing the tea, and then uh, as they dress up, I'm the one dressing him. He doesn't dress himself up. He can do it, but because of the the time, I normally dress him up. Uh, and then uh, after taking tea, I take him to the to the bus mm -hmm. because he he doesn't accept to walk alone. He has changed our life in so many ways. He's, he's loving, he's always happy. This house is empty without him. Um, Amina, can you, can you share with us um, when you were first uh, hit with the diagnosis that your child had Down syndrome? Okay, Bilal's condition, well, we came to learn about it when he was seven months old. And uh, and uh, uh, I was so worried about his neck, and uh, he was not sitting by then, and the neck was not stable to hold uh, the head. Mm. So these things got me worried. So one day when I was at work, I just, uh, I don't know what pushed me, I just uh, went to Google, to see what might be the cause of his delays. Mm. And then uh, I came across a list of disabilities. Um, mm. one, of the, one of the symptoms of Down syndrome is that these children, they are in non-verbal state, meaning they have speech, you know, it's speech delay. Um, how are you able to navigate that period where your child cannot talk, but you know he needs something, but you don't know what he needs? How did you go through that and what was the what was your mental um where was your your mental abilities in that time like how did you feel going through that and watching your son being unable to articulate or verbalize his need okay it was uh, it was very stressful moment because uh, you have a child whom you cannot communicate with you don't mm -hmm. know what he wants you will you will just see he he collects something and hits you and you know when they don't talk they they want to say something and they don't know how to say they get frustrated 
So mm -hmm. out of that, they will pick something and throw at you. They will slap you. They can even pull your hair and you don't know how to handle this. And uh, we, after, after he walked, he, he achieved the walking milestone. We decided to start speech therapy and uh, <clears throat> we did speech therapy and even at home we try to teach him uh, basic basic uh, basic utens something basic things that he uses at home like cup plate those things and uh, through uh, through those those health and speech therapy we came through and uh, now he's, he's he has a very good speech Wow. So now we, I mean, I love that we, uh, your son is healthy. There is no heart condition. Mm -hmm. He has a mm -hmm. speech. Now we, he is, you know, in school. Is he, mm -hmm. what kind of school does he attend? Does he attend a special needs school? Does he go to the regular school? He goes to and... regular school. Hmm. He goes to regular school. Yeah. He goes to regular school. And uh, I chose the regular school because, uh, you know, <clears throat> Uh, with the with those kids who can uh, the, the typical kids if they if if they mix up with those kids he can learn a lot of things i wanted mm -hmm. him to be challenged i mm -hmm. i wanted him to to you know kids with down syndrome mimic a lot and through mimicking he will learn a lot of social activities that is that are being done by these kids, these typical kids. Yeah. Hmm. Wow. That is such it, a, a, a bold move because mm -hmm. I, I know some parents, they are always really scared to put their, their children in, in quote, the typical school because now you don't know because you, you're no longer able to protect the child. You don't know whether the child is going to be bullied. You don't know whether they are even going to discriminate against that child in an integrated school. So I think it's really bold of you to do that. And I love the rationale in the sense that let him be among everybody so that he himself yeah. see I that he is a normal person as special. well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't when I want him to look special. I don't want, people to look at him as a special child. I want them to look at him as a, as a child, as, as, a, as a typical child, the way they look at the typical children. That's I, mm -hmm. how I wanted them to look at him. I, mm -hmm. I don't he, take him as a special child. Even mm -hmm. in the house, he just, I, I can send him anywhere in the house. Bilal, go bring me this. Bilal, Bilal, come call daddy and tell him we need this. I send him like any, like his, like I'm sending his brother the same, the same way I'm treating him. Yeah. I think my last question is in your home, of course, you've created a safe space, but now going into the world, mm -hmm. we know actually in mm -hmm. Africa, there's a lot of ignorance. People don't know what Down syndrome is. When you go yeah. out with your son, what are some of the responses or reactions you get from people and how do you deal with that? Okay, uh, people will ask question a lot of question, and uh, especially when he was not talking and uh, the time he 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 was he was not walking sitting, they really used to ask a lot of question, and uh, <clears throat> the the, mo the mostly what they used to ask was uh, how old is is this baby or this child. And when you tell tell them the age, they will ask you. He's he's five years old and he's not talking. And mm -hmm. then they will they will ask you. He's uh, he's seven months and he's still not sitting. That kind of mm -hmm. question. And and you know, it doesn't bother me. It doesn't mm -hmm. bother me. I just sit down and explain to them what's wrong with him and why he has not attained his milestone at the required time. Wow. You're doing such a fantastic job. It takes a lot of patience to be able to, you know, even when your child does have public tantrums, to apologize and then say, let me use this yeah. as a teachable moment so that you know what is wrong with this child. Thank you so much, uh, Miss Amina, for joining us today to share your story. We've really learned a lot from you. Thank you. You're welcome and thank you. Thank you.
it was like the end of the world, end of my world. I thought I had just failed. I, I felt like a failure. For my daughter's um, naming ceremony, it was very low key. Mm. It was as if there was nothing to rejoice. Mm. Do you understand? It was as if there was nothing to be happy about. Some people might have even thought mm. that maybe it was my fault. In my um, trying to go into the community, people see my daughter and I, they don't move close to us, especially pregnant women. I'm sorry to say this here because they feel they can it's contagious if like they have anything to do with us they can have a child with um like that you know our next guest is mrs tola from nigeria she is the founder of moi olua rainbow foundation one of the very few centers in lagos nigeria that actually cares for children with down syndrome i'm very excited today to have this conversation with her to hear some of her challenges and her journey specifically from this woman who had to quit her job to now run in one of the high-end and reputable down syndrome foundations in nigeria so um, i was doing my research and i read something about you where you said like in 2011 when you you gave birth um in, five days after you gave birth that was when you got the diagnosis that your daughter had down syndrome how was that like for you like getting that um diagnosis oh my god uh looking back right now i just uh it's like a like a flash in the pan i can say my god that it was like the end of the world end of my world i thought i had just failed i, I felt like a failure i felt like i had um, failed my daughter you know um i wasn't even thinking about myself but then i was devastated it was a news that i never expected do you understand what i mean that like, must have been so difficult that must yeah. have been so difficult I mean, because now i i i did i i do want to now move ahead because you also have shared that your daughter also had a heart condition yeah did when did you now become aware of the other you know health complication that she oh, was going wow. through so you you see uh a lot of health problems come with down syndrome and um I, although I'd known about Down syndrome before having my daughter, but I did not think that um, I would begin to see all the problems, you know, I just wanted to carry her in my arms. And then five days after the news came that, you know, it was confirmed that she had, she has Down syndrome, I really broke down. And then uh, the next thing that we had to deal with was uh, not, she not cry, um, her not crying for food. She wouldn't cry for food. I had to wake her intermittently then. She was very weak. Um, but you know, all of this come, all of this come with the features or symptoms of having Down syndrome, like low I hypotonia, which is like a low muscle tone. So I didn't really worry much mm -hmm. until the doctors now tried to educate me that, oh, I needed to check, you know, like do like an echocardiogram for her to check if she has a heart condition. So when the diagnosis of the heart condition came, she was three months old. You know, it was one of the tests that we had been told to do when I was discharged, when we were discharged from the hospital. It was one of the urgent tests the doctors wanted us to do because um, children with Down syndrome are susceptible to heart diseases. Now that you became aware of your child's uh, diagnosis in terms of her heart condition, and I'm really looking at it in the context of Nigeria, mm -hmm. considering that we know, you know, the healthcare system is not the best. These are not the kind of conditions that are easily treatable or, you know, well known in our hospitals. Mm -hmm. How were you able to navigate this? Where did you go for the surgery? Um, it was a very, very tough call. I can say that, yeah, because I remember um, apart from being shocked, I I know that I I lived in denial for well uh, maybe a few weeks because um, I just called my friend and told her hey look um, they said she's got Down syndrome and she was like no she doesn't I said yeah she does and even though it was really hard for me to cope but I kind of stopped living in denial I started looking for how to support my daughter and knowing fully well that she's come. Um, the result had come that she has a heart condition. We started Googling, um, making our own research on which hospitals to go to, blah, blah, blah. We found one hospital in India, and then we asked for quotation, and then they sent, those, they sent us the quotation for the heart surgery. Oh, my God. Just taking me back to all of this. It was a lot of money. What a journey. <laughs> what a journey. Yeah, and, absolutely. I mean, live, going through this, especially... 
not in any other African country. Nigeria. Nigeria. You know how Nigerians <laughs> sometimes, you know the way we behave, ignorance, and we are so vocal oh. about our thoughts, Tell me about, about our reactions. And listen, <laughs> <laughs> and now this is why I want I to ask you now, you know, being a mother and having a daughter with Down syndrome, how are you able to, you know, deal with some of the reactions or stigma that comes from the, the from the general public that you live in? How do you navigate that? I wasn't taking out hours. We're not going out. So I wasn't coming out of my room. We're not coming out. We're not. We're just in the room. Like I wasn't even, I didn't remember I'd not eaten. I mean, then I remember I would at, at that. I would just be in my room. <laughs> I will never come out of that room. At least, you know, maybe I'll come out for breakfast, like um, 1 p.m. ish, you know. And then I took another bold step um, because then at three months already, she was still very, very tender. Even at seven months, eight months, she was so tender, very tiny, with a very small head because uh, people with Down syndrome, are, um, some of them will have uh, very small heads. That's called microcephaly. And what I tried to do yeah. was... Um, I was running um, two businesses by the side and I had not resigned from my job. And so I started taking that to my outfit and people would look at her, like stare at her and, and people would, would ask questions like, oh, what, why is her head small? Oh, what's wrong with her? Oh, why is her face like this? Oh, this, oh, that. That was because I had started taking it out. Even for my daughter's um, naming ceremony, it was very low key. It was as if there was nothing to rejoice. Mm. Do you understand? It was as if there was nothing to be happy about, so nothing to rejoice, you know, about something like that. It was just very quiet, you know. Mm. Even when I took her yeah. to church, yeah. I just couldn't show her like I would have, because she was really very tiny and definitely looking at you. Are you want to ask is she? Because she was looking sickly. Do you get what I mean? And yeah. Oh my God! So bit by bit we started. And and, and you know you know. Yeah, and you know Nigerian religion, and you know if you take oh her to church. Oh my God! The, don't get me started, please. <laughs> don't hmm, get hmm. me started. Start, please. <laughs> Let me please start. start. Uh -huh. Okay. Start. <laughs> you know, um, it was uh, even when people were asking a lot of questions, it was as if um, they thought um, I didn't have faith. Some people might have even thought hmm. that maybe it was my fault. Because someone that said, oh, that what did I, what me medication did I take while I was pregnant, you know. There was even a time I started checking my heart. Oh, my God. Oh, that is not my fault. But I was even feeling guilty again, you know. Because people yeah. will make you feel you, you've you done something wrong. You know, how did you get your, how did you get this child? Where did you get this child from? And then the religion part, that one even really, really uh, did my head in, in the sense that, for a long time, even when I, I moved, I relocated back to Lagos for a long time. I was in Port Harcourt then. For a long time, people still felt I needed to have faith. My faith was not strong enough. Even in my um, trying to go into the community, people see my daughter and I, they don't move close to us, especially pregnant women. I'm sorry to say this here. Because they feel they can, it's contagious if, like, they have anything to do with us, they can have a child with, um, like that, you know, something like that, yeah. Uh, what is your I like right to walk. I, I, uh, I want a cushion. I have the right to walk. I have the blood. I have the right to walk. Yeah, I have the blood. Um, is this what prompted you to open uh, Muyo Lua uh, Rainbow Foundation? Is it is it because of some of these experiences yes. that you're like, absolutely. let me now be the voice for others? Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, it was because I started seeing more children like my daughter in my community. And I'm like, where the heck mm. have they been all those years? You know, mm -hmm. thinking about it, I've never seen. But I thought about it again. Okay. Maybe because I didn't want to see them. They've always been around. Yes. They've always been around. Yes. And sometimes you choose to believe yes. what you want to believe. You choose to see what you yes. want to see, what you want to see. And as a people, Absolutely. as a community, we choose, you know, to um, reject what we want to reject. I saw a child in church one day and I saw his butt and his, his hands dropping, legs dropping. And he was about five years old. He was about five years old then. And then I knew those were those that was one of the symptoms of having Down syndrome. But I had moved closer, and then I had confirmed 
that he has Down syndrome. And I, I, I said hello to the mom. He said, oh, hello, and looked down. And uh, I was saying hello to her son already. She looked down and said, oh, um, like trying to hide her son. I said, don't worry. My daughter has Down syndrome as well. Nice to meet your son. And I got home that day and I wow. was pondering over this. Oh, my God. We have all those children. So my daughter is not alone. Wow. I was so excited. All of a sudden, in my room, it was quiet. I was folding my coat, sitting on my bed. It was just me. I just heard that voice. You are never alone. You know you're not alone. Wow. Now you can see you're not alone. I need your voice out there. I thought it was... Wow. I was talking to myself like... Oh my God, I just wow. found myself crying. I cried like a baby. I cried so much that it was clear that, oh my God, <laughs> you know, I cried so much that day and I said, okay, this is just me being too emotional. And then that voice never leave, left me, never stopped. I took a break, went to the UK. Wow. That was 2014. The voice still followed me you know it was very it wasn't really clear but at a point I could not fight it I didn't know how to run a foundation I didn't know how to run an organization I'd never done one though I'd been in a leadership position working in the bank for 11 years you know oh my god I, was, I just started <laughs> from doing nothing I started you know reading studying and now <laughs> from knowing nothing and now it is like one of the few centers in lagos nigeria that takes care of down syndrome yeah. like you're doing an incredible job for people who do not know what you do at your foundation can you just share a little bit about what you do yeah so, so we have like physical therapy like i said occupational therapy language and communication development um also teaching them math skills um, literacy skills, um, reading skills, because um, according to research, uh, people with Down syndrome um, have the tendency to be good readers, you know, for their disability. Mm. It's what more rainbow, more rainbow offers to to parents out there, yeah. to caregivers. Yeah, yeah, out yeah. There we offer who training are for early yeah, intervention. training as well. Then, of course, we yeah. have um, the teenagers. We prepare them for the real world. Uh, we do wow. vocational. We prepare them to. We help them to acquire vocational skills as well and like baking hair making uh shoe making we do a lot of hands-on stuff you know over there wow. it's really an amazing wow. place to be you know i'm really really wow. grateful for uh um, you know for that you know because um it's just wow. from having a child now now you're able to like reach out to so many people so that they're not feeling alone on the journey yeah 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 Wow. Thank you so much, uh, Mrs. Stola. I am so grateful for you. And I am so grateful for you listening to the voice that told you it's time. It's time. You're not alone. <laughs> Thank you, because the work you're doing is so impactful. And uh, a lot of people would definitely benefit from it. Thank yeah, you so much for coming to so the show much. to share your story. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Doctor is the one who called me to his clinic and asked me whether I know anything about Down syndrome. And I was like, yes, I do know something. Mm -hmm. So he told me my child has Down syndrome. And so the next thing that he told me, he told me that, and I'm suspecting that your child has a heart defect. Now that one killed me. Our next guest on the show is Mrs. Esther, fondly called Mama Gift. Mama Gift is the mother of a seven-year-old daughter who has Down syndrome. Unfortunately, her daughter also had a heart condition that forced them to travel to India to get surgery. But despite these challenges, Mama Gift says that it is a privilege for her to mother gift in this world. Can you share with us, you know, when you found out that your child was had a, a Down syndrome? Uh, when I got my child, I got her uh, around 12.30, 12.30 p.m. during the day. Mm -hmm. And by 4 in the evening, we knew. So the doctor is the one who called me to his clinic and asked me whether I know anything about Down syndrome. And I was like, yes, I do know something. Mm -hmm. So he told me my child has Down syndrome. And so the next thing that he told me, he told me that, and I'm suspecting that your child has a heart defect. Now that one killed me. And was, is this your first child? Is this your first child? No, this was my, la this is my last born. This was my fourth child. 
Wow. And none of your child has had the Down syndrome before? None. Not even the heart problem. None. Actually, my children, they've never had any health issues. So this was new to me. It was scary. It was, uh, I don't know. It was challenging. I didn't know how to take it. Both of us, we don't, we didn't even know how to tell each other with my hubby. Actually, him, he went mute. He didn't know what to say. I am so sorry that this was what you went through. This is incredibly painful. And I can imagine how traumatizing it is. But right now, your baby girl, you took her for the surgery. She's healthy? Yes, yes, we did. After I see you, we were told we have to, to, to do the surgery within two months. Mm -hmm. And this surgery, it wasn't available in our country. So we were told we have to go to India. You shared with me that sometimes uh, when people react or they see her, they because of ignorance, people don't know a lot about uh, Down mm -hmm. syndrome. How do you navigate, like maybe when she has a public tantrum, you know, because she's un 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 unaware of certain things. How do you navigate mm -hmm. those kind of uh, issues that occur in the public sphere that affects mm -hmm. maybe a stranger that you do not know because of your daughter? What do you do in situations yeah. like that? Uh, I can say that special needs children we suffer and they are their caregivers that is us now mm -hmm. we suffer from social stigma a lot a lot from the school the community the society even family itself there are people that will speak what when you're not hearing and you'll hear it from someone else wow and it's not easy there's discrimination there are kids who do not want to play with your child, and it will affect their well-being. I know that you're part of a support group for families with Down syndrome called T21. Mm -hmm. Can you, can you yes. share more about your, um, can you share more about this group? And maybe for other people here in Kenya that want to join this support group for families of mothers with Down syndrome, how can they, uh, how can they join? Okay, our group is an organization. We call ourselves T21 FSO. FSO stands for Family Support Organization. T21 comes from the, as you're aware, Down syndrome is caused by the, chrom the 21st chromosome being three times. They're supposed mm -hmm. to be two chromosomes, but they become mm -hmm. three. So they're mm -hmm. triple. So that is why we call ourselves T21. The family support organization is for mothers. And also we have a group of fathers with children living with Down syndrome. We want to be our, our children's advocates. Mm -hmm. Outside there, it's not easy for them. As I've told you, they will meet people over there who will think that they cannot do anything. Yeah. Even at school, they are discriminated against. Wow. The other children are told to do a certain sport. Yours is told to go sit there because they believe they won't be able to do it. Yeah. So we want to advocate for, for our children. We fight for them. We also want to educate the society out there. We want to tell them all about Down syndrome and also special needs. We want to yeah. create awareness. We want to allow everyone to know about this condition and other yeah. conditions. Yeah. And we want our children to be included everywhere, to be accepted everywhere because they can do it. They can do yes. anything yes. as long as we push. They just need that push, that yeah. little push. And yeah. they will reach where their peers are. They may be delayed, but they will reach there at some time. Absolutely. So that Absolutely. is what that through. When this happens and the diagnosis has been made, it is not time for blame to point fingers to anyone. Rather, it should be ideally a time of us reasoning together, putting our heads together and finding a lasting solution to the problems that we have and bringing up the child that we have, but not the child that we expected or we mm -hmm. had, you know, fantas fantasized about in our minds. So you've heard from all our guests and everything they say is make sure you start therapy quickly. Make sure the child is diagnosed quickly. But what is this therapy all about? I know that I am not so sure what the therapy a child with Down syndrome needs requires. And I'm sure that some of my audience as well do not know. 
This is why we have an occupational therapist, Mr. Duncan, who is going to be sharing with us expert opinions on, you know, the kind of therapy that a child who has Down syndrome should get and some behavioral milestones and achievements that parents should be aware of when they have a child with Down syndrome. Mr. Duncan, can you just share with us what exactly, you know, an occupational therapist do? I mean, before we even start going into the other conversations. Okay. So occupational therapists are clinicians. Um, we say it's either an art or a science. And uh, whatever an occupational therapy is being mentioned about that, there must be a disability which is being mentioned somewhere. No the whole essence of occupational therapy is to enable human beings to perform into their very basic uh, needs. Uh, mm -hmm. This includes the basic needs are divided into two. We have what we call basic and we have what we call instrumentals. The basic mm -hmm. things are things like dressing, uh, feeding themselves, or even, you know, daily groomings. So what would you say are some of the typical milestones and achievements that you aim for when you start therapy with a child who has Down syndrome? Milestones behave like people running relay. And in a relay, there must be some very, very specific principles. And number one, there must be a distance and there must be a button that needs to be handed over. Mm -hmm. So in a child development, the milestone run in a circle of like 90 days, 90 days, that's now like three months. So when a child is born, the next three months, um, the child needs to gain head control. The next six months, that's six months. The next three months, that takes us to six months, the child also needs to acquire sitting. The next three months, that's 90 days uh, or 90 months for that, 90 months, at that, uh, nine months at, that, at, at this point, the child mm -hmm. needs to begin crawling. And then by the first birthday, the child needs to be up and about and walk. So these are generally uh, what we call a physical milestone. The other milestones, like cognitive milestone, things like uh, cooing, things like smiling, things like um, manipulating things with their own hand, things like um, acquiring speech and language and so on and so forth. So just the last question, Mr. Duncan, before I let you go. Um, for families out there who have children with Down syndrome, what can they do to help support the development of their child from their home, even if they are going for therapy, what can they, what are the little things that they can do from the comfort of their home? And also for like people who probably cannot afford, you know, therapy sessions because these things can be quite expensive. What are some of the things that they can do at home to um, support the development of their child? I think one of the most important things I've seen from an experience point of view is you need to work on your mental health. One of the mm -hmm. most difficult thing, every other mother who goes to deliver, you go to deliver expecting a, a health-bouncing baby, boy or a girl. And one of the most devastating news I've found in my many years of practice is walking into a bedside and trying to, to introduce the debate of, oops, or, you know, or, you know, uh, something went wrong. And then catching up with the whole debate from there, it requires a lot of mental health preparation. And immediately after that, there's a lot of things to do. Number one, letting the parents get to know exactly what it is, what exactly Down syndrome is all about. Because I've been, I found myself previously in a situation whereby um, parents are in denial and they refuse to accept. And you have to keep on explaining again, or they go different parts of the world trying to look for a lasting solution. Uh, recently, as 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 uh, recent as yesterday, uh, the parent who wants to go for a stem cells, mm -hmm. you know, you try make sense of it. It's 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 a little bit of a difficult thing to really come into terms and say this is what it is. Mm -hmm. The other factor away from the mental health issues of parents is support that you require uh, from the parents. You know, there is this notion and African traditional way of thinking where we when when we go for looking for solutions of which are not available or we go into a blame game or you know because my grandmother uh, mm. said i should not marry you then this happened mm. uh traditions uh, cases of practice you know when you are pregnant you eat liver you know and other many silly types of you know traditional practices which do not honestly really make sense and when this happens and the diagnosis has been made it is not time for blame point fingers to anyone. Rather, it should be ideally a time of us reasoning together, putting our heads together and finding a lasting solution to the problems that we have and bringing up the child that we have, but not the child that we expected or we mm. had, you know, fantas fantasized about in our minds. 
Well, this brings us to the end of today's conversation. I hope you really enjoyed it. But you guys know that the Lord Los Cynthia show is not about just entertaining you guys. We want to make sure that you, we educate you. We want to make sure that after you leave, you know, our show today, you are inspired. You have more kindness. You have more empathy for the people around you. So today's conversation around Down syndrome is very important to me because these are children and we all need to take care of the children in our family, the children in our community. So I hope today's conversation has given you the required knowledge to fight for the rights for children who have Down syndrome in your community. Again, I want to thank the women who came on the show today to share their stories, caring for a child with Down syndrome. I know it takes a lot to open your heart, for us to come in there, for us to share your story with you. So thank you, thank you so much. Again, to the audience, if you enjoyed this conversation, do not forget to like, subscribe, and share this video. We would love to hear your opinion regarding the conversation and maybe some of the stigmas and stereotypes associated with Down syndrome in your community. Again, to everyone who watched our show, I wanna say a very big thank you for supporting us throughout this season, and we cannot wait to see you next week. My name is Lolo Cynthia, and I will see you next week. Bye-bye.